Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex or Nuznas here and welcome to my full Araxor guide for all styles. This guide is going to be a beginner's guide for learning Araxor, but I'll also have some advanced tips shown as well at the end. So without further ado, let's get into the guide. So first we're going to start with my credibility. This is something I want to start doing when I make guides so you the viewers know that I'm familiar with the topic I'm making a guide on and not just making a guide with very little experience. So I have killed almost 1000 of Araxor and I have the full collection log completed. I have killed about half of my kills with ranged but the other half have been pretty even in magic and melee. So I'm very experienced at Araxor with all styles and this is one of my favorite bosses and personally I think it's a great boss to kill to transition into high level PVM. So now we're going to move on to the recommended stats for killing Araxor. Now I would recommend 90 plus in all combat stats, 95 prayer for soul split and turmoil is pretty much a must have, as well as 96 herblore for overloads although you could probably get by with extremes. You need at least 67 summoning for a war tortoise but preferably level 87 or higher. Having perked out armor and weapons is very useful, which means having invention unlocked. Alright, so now that we're done with the recommended stats, here are the mechanics that you need to be familiar with dealing with or be prepared to learn to deal with during the Araxor fight. So movement is number one. At Araxor, you'll be moving around a lot, as Araxor is fought in an arena that you progress through as the fight goes on. So having things like the mobile perk or a bladed dive and double surge can really, really help you here. Number two is going to be prayer switching, knowing how to switch prayers and preferably having your protection prayers keybinded is a must have for fighting Araxor. As we get into last phase, prayer switching is very, very important. And finally, knowing how to use defensive abilities like Anticipate and Freedom and possibly things like Resonance are all very, very useful when fighting Araxor, so that is something else that you'll be prepared to learn or already know how to do. So first off, how do you get to Araxor? Well, Araxor is a spider boss that's located deep in our hive in the Haunted Woods. The easiest way to get there is to use an Ectophile and run south, or you can teleport to the Canifus lodestone and run east to get to the hive. Of course once you get your first kill you can just tune your portal at the PVM hub or at the max guild. Now we're going to go over a few basic facts about the boss. So Araxor has four phases and it's recommended to create an instance when killing Araxor. The reason is if you create an instance, Araxor will attack you based on the style you're using. So if you're meleeing, Araxor will range you. If you're ranging, Araxor will mage you, etc. So you can also bring something called an Araxite pheromone with you, which is a purchasable drop from Araxor. And when you have it in your inventory, if you do this, you do not have to create an instance and Araxor will still attack you with the correct combat style, so you can do that as well. So moving on, we're going to talk about Araxor's Enrage system. Araxor is a unique boss as it has an Enrage system and also has a cycling phase system. Araxor has three paths that we will get into later, and two of them are active at a time and always cycling. So for instance, sometimes the Darkness path and the Minion path will be open. This will mean you can either head down either of those paths when you fight, but you'll still have to deal with all the mechanics from them later. You will not deal with the mechanics from the third path that is constantly closed. Now in terms of Enrage, Araxor can go from 0 to 300% Enrage and raises 20% each kill. Now the Enrage has no effect on loot whatsoever, at least in terms of spider legs or hilts. The loot effect from Enrage is mostly just pheromones, which are pretty negligible. And also the pet rate is slightly increased or decreased depending on the Enrage. So here is an amazing chart and all credit to the RuneScape wiki which shows the enrage percentage and how the enrage affects the mechanics from Araxor. So the only way that enrage can be reset is if you wait a day. This is generally how a lot of people kill the boss, they'll do maybe 10 kills in a day and then wait until enrage resets and continue doing more kills. 
or you can eat something called an araxite pheromone that we talked about before. This costs 1.5 mil to buy, and when you eat it, it'll reset Araxor's enrage. This is generally worth it if you plan to camp Araxor, as the loot is very, very good compared to the cost of the pheromone. So speaking of the loot from Araxor, you're mainly looking for the pieces to create the tier 90 noxious weapons. You need three pieces of spider legs and a hilt to make a weapon. Each spider leg can only be dropped on the path you decide to take. So if path 1 and 2 are open, and you take path 2, you can only get the middle leg piece. Here is a great picture via the RuneScape wiki explaining just what loot you can get from each path in terms of spider leg parts. Alright, so now that you know about the boss, we're going to go over some gear recommendations and some setups. So first is Summoning Familiars. Now Araxor is a unique boss in terms of Summoning Familiars as accuracy is definitely a huge problem at Araxor and you'll hit a ton of zeros if you're not using the right gear. Well, Summoning Familiars can help you with this. Most notably, the best Summoning Familiars to use for Araxor are Nihils for their accuracy boost. Araxi cannot be damaged by familiars, so something like a Ripper Demon won't be nearly as good unless you have 100% accuracy, which is very tough to get at Araxor for most people. Alternatively though, when first learning as a beginner, bringing a Beast of Burden is highly recommended. Something like a War Tortoise or a Pakyak filled with supplies is very very good for learning Araxor. So that is what I would recommend, a Beast of Burden when you're first learning, and then eventually you can switch into using a Nihil. Now we're going to look at the best auras to use for Araxor, and like I said previously, accuracy is extremely important. So for auras, you'll want to use either a Berserk style aura like Reckless, Maniacal, or Berserker, or you'll want to use an accuracy boosting aura like Sharpshooter, Runic Accuracy, or Supreme Brawler. You can use other auras, but like I said, accuracy is super important, so I'd recommend these auras by far. Another notable boost I want to talk about real quick is from player-owned farm perks. There's a perk that you can get for having an elder spider in a medium pen with a totem placed on that pen's hotspot. This perk is called the nope 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 perk and it gives a 2 to 3% damage boost against all spiders which includes Araxor. 2% is for the tier 1 perk and it goes up to 3% for the tier 2 perk. I'll leave a link in the description to the wiki page if you want to look more into getting this perk. Alright, so now we're going to go over some example gears and inventory setups for Araxor for every single style. Again, the timestamps will be in the description if you'd like to skip to your combat style of choice. Alright, so now we're going to go through a beginner and high level setup for each combat style. Now first up is ranged, and I'll try to be brief, but you can always pause the video and I put indicators so you can see exactly what everything is. And feel free to tailor these presets and setups to what you have. You do not need to have everything exactly that I have. And I'll make sure that I mention the key items that you want to have. So for the high level setup, we have full ceramic armor with ascension crossbows. I have an invention perking guide that I'll link in the description for anyone that needs it, but Enhanced Devoted is very very useful at Araxor. We have Fleeting Boots which help to rapid fire while moving which is really nice since you'll be moving a lot at Araxor. We have the Ring of Death, you do not want to use Reaver's Ring here as you don't have 100% accuracy. Essence of Finality is very very good here, Nightmare Gauntlets are good since you could not poison Araxor, so you would not want to use something like Cinderbanes, Kiln Cape, Cruelty Scrimshaw, and Ruby the Criminal Bolts. Now for the inventory we of course have our food, you'll want to have your Overloads and Adrenaline Potions anti-poison since Rax can poison you unless you have the Venom Blood perk or something to mitigate the poison. Super stores for prayer, SGB spec in or out of an EOF is very very strong in Araxor, especially on phase 4. We have the Ring of Vigor and Planted Feet Switch for our death swiftness, Enhanced Excalibur for the extra heals, and Ceradomen Bruise. It's worth noting that I do have a main hand weapon to use along with my Excalibur if I want to use Bladed Dive to get around easier. 
Now, moving on to the beginner setup, again, this is very, very basic and very bare bones. We have Armadale Armor, Ascension Grips, Luck of the Dwarves, but Ring of Death is also fine, and actually, it's probably better if you're a beginner. We have the Kiln Cape, Reaper Necklace. Now, Reaper Necklace is super important. Since accuracy is so important at a Rexor, you will definitely want to try to have a Reaper Necklace, as it will help you so, so much when doing a Rexor. If I had to point out any item to get, it, it's make sure that you have a reaper necklace or an es essence of finality before you start doing a Raxor. It is super important. The Cruelty Scrimshaw is next, Wyvern Crossbow, so we can still use the Criminal Bolts. Dual Wield Chaotix could work as well if you don't have a Wyvern Crossbow. Then we have our Ruby the Criminal Bolts. As for the inventory, it's pretty much the same. We have Food, Overloads, Anti-Poison, Adrenaline Pot, Planted Feet, and Vigor Switch, Enhanced Excalibur, a the Criminal Bolt Switch for when a Raxor's HP is lower and you don't want to use Ruby Bolts. Diamond Bolts, Enchanted, work very well. Then we have Super Restores, and finally, Sarah Doman Brews. One last thing I'll mention is the Overload Salve is very good to use because it has an anti-poison, so you won't have to worry about having an anti-poison in there as well. So moving on to melee, we're looking at an advanced setup first, and keep in mind, like I said, if you have better weapons like tier 92s or stuff like that, you can feel free to swap those out. I just wanted to give a high level setup that is good, but also has room to improve as well. A more realistic high level setup, if you will. So for the high level setup, we have trimmed masterwork armor, which is very good for taking damage. If you get hit by a cleave or something like that, you'll most likely not die like you probably would without it, depending on your enrage. We have the essence of finality, which you're going to notice as a theme with all these setups. The noxious scythe, because having a weapon that has halberd range, so you can stay out of melee distance from a Raxor and get hit by the ranged attack instead of his melee attack is super, super useful. We have the kill Kiln Cape Alloy Spikes are decent for the ammo slot, but of course not needed. We have the Scrimshaw of Vampirism. Uh, if you want more damage, a Grimoire is good, but a Vampirism Scrimshaw is good to heal up and makes for more chill kills. And finally, we have a Ring of Death. You could also use an Asylum Surgeon's Ring as well if you aren't worried about death. And a Death Touch Bracelet is also an optional replacement in place of the Masterwork Gloves. However, you will have to watch out for that hitting the Mirrorback Spider or the web shield. So for the inventory, we have the usual. We have Sailfish, Overloads, Anti-Poison, Adrenaline Potions, Ring of Vigor, Luck of the Dwarves, Enhanced Excalibur, a Drygor Switch for using our Destroy ability. You don't have to bring this, but it's better DPS. We have Super Restores, Bruise, and then you can also bring a Saren God Bow if you have Ingenuity of the Humans, and then you can use your Saren God Bow on the last phase for a big damage boost. Moving on to the beginner setup, these beginner setups are pretty bare bones and they're basically the absolute minimum that I would recommend going to a Raxor in. So if you have better items, of course feel free to slot them in. We have full Bandos armor starting us off, then a Dragon Rider Lance so we can keep at range from a Raxor. We have the Reaper Necklace which is very very strong like I said, the Kiln Cape, the Ring of Death, and the Vampirism Scrimshaw to keep our HP up. Uh, Vampirism Scrimshaw is super good for beginners at Araxor, so I would highly, highly recommend it. For the inventory, it's mostly the same as the advanced setup. We have the Sailfish Overloads Anti-Poison, Adrenaline Potions, Ring of Vigor as a switch, Luck of the Dwarves as a switch, Enhanced Excalibur, a shield switch, because as a beginner, you can actually use Quake on the web shield to heal if you time it right, and also a shield is good in case you panic and need to barricade from a poisonous spider or something or you can also resonance some hits during the darkness path, which of course we'll get into later. And then of course, Super Restores and Sarah Doman Brews. So finally, we have the magic setup. Now for this, I will not be showing a beginner setup because magic is honestly the worst style to use at Araxor, especially if you're a beginner. It's really annoying because Araxor melees you a lot. And seeing as he uses the melee style while you mage, this can get very annoying. The only reason you would really ever want to mage is because you have a higher drop rate of getting uh, Raxor's Fang, which is worth more money, but honestly, in the long run, it's probably not worth your time. I will, however, give you an advanced magic setup 
Uh, but going with the beginner setup, you're going to have a pretty tough time maging a Raxor. So for our advanced setup, we have full tectonic armor and essence of finality. We've got a rune pouch, a kiln cape, blast diffusion boots, ring of death, Kurapax wrist wraps, the staff of Sliske. However, you can use a noxious staff, seismic wands, basically anything. Inquisitor staff, however, is not good here. We have the scrimshaw of the elements to round out the setup. So for the inventory setup, it's basically the exact same as the others. You've got sailfish, overloads, anti-poison, adrenaline potions, ring of vigor, luck of the dwarves, excalibur, a shield switch, super stores, and ceridome and brews. So now we're going to start getting into Araxor's mechanics. So first we'll start off with Phase 1 of Araxor. For Phase 1, you will enter the arena and immediately go to the web blocking the path that you want to go down. For instance, if you want to go down middle path, you will go to the web in the middle and click on it to start burning it down once Araxor has spawned. You will then need to fight Araxor while the web burns and get Araxor to 5k HP or lower. So for phase one, it's always the same in terms of what special attacks you have to deal with. A Raxor will use a special attack every five auto attacks, so make sure to keep that in mind. The first special attack is the cocoon special attack. Basically, the player gets trapped into a web cocoon and you must spam click to get out of it. But if you use freedom or anticipate before you are put in the cocoon, you can get out in just two clicks, compared to five clicks if you don't. Using anticipate after the fourth auto attack is recommended to make it easier to get out. Secondly, we have the cleave ability. This is the most deadly special that kills a lot of beginner PVMers. Basically, a Raxor cleaves you, dealing massive damage at about 4k at 0% in rage, up to over 10k at higher in rages. This can easily be a one-hit kill for a lot of players. Luckily, there's a simple way to avoid it. So you want to make sure you're a few steps away from a Raxor out of distance of the cleave, and then you want to anticipate after the fourth auto attack from a Raxor. This will mean a Raxor's cleave will not pull you in and you will not get hit by it. If however you are meleeing or in close to melee distance to a Raxor, you will need to click back as a Raxor swipes. If you don't have anticipate or freedom available, you can spam click away from a Raxor to avoid the cleave as well. The next and last special attack on phase 1 is the web shield or cobweb special attack. So basically a Raxor goes into a web shield and starts healing health. A Raxor will also reflect all damage back to the player, so you want to get off a Raxor immediately when the wedge shield happens or you can very easily die. This is a pretty simple special attack to avoid, just stop attacking a Raxor. So those are all the special attacks you have to deal with in phase 1. So in summary, you basically go in and and you burn a Raxor's web. You'll then use Sunshine, Death Swiftness, and use your normal damage rotation while making sure you freedom or anticipate before every special attack so you can deal with it easier. Of course, if you mess up, you can easily escape the cocoon or run away from the cleave even if you forget to anticipate. So the order of the special attacks is always different, but a Raxor will only use these three specials on phase one. Now keep in mind, once a Raxor is below 5k health, he will keep healing once you hit him below that. So if you get him to like 5k or below before the web is completely burned, you can just use defensives or heal up and you don't need to keep damaging a Raxor, it will not do anything. Once the web is burnt, you want to make sure a Raxor is low health around 5k or below. Then we'll move on to phase 2. So phase two is the unique phase depending on the path that you take. So we're going to start off with the darkness path, otherwise known as bottom path. So when you go into the darkness path, it will become dark and Araxor will be unattackable. This is a great time to equip your dual wield weapons for bladed dive. Araxor will attack you from the air with mage and range attacks. I will show you now which each attack looks like so you can be aware of them during the fight. On this phase, you'll want to look for the spotlights that appear on the ground. If you're not in these spotlights, you will take rapid damage from the darkness, and it will increase the longer you stay out of the spotlights, so make sure you get to them as soon as possible. Zooming out of your screen really helps. Now the spotlight will continue moving and you'll need to follow it around. Now during this path, Araxor can use another new special attack called the Egg Bomb. 
This special attack puts three eggs on the ground, and an explosive bomb will appear in the air. You basically want to run onto the eggs and stand on them, and then the explosive will kill the eggs and deal you a small amount of damage. However, if you do not stand on the eggs, the explosive will hit you for 3000 damage and the eggs will spawn a few minions, but the minions can usually be killed pretty easily. Generally on Darkness Path, you do want to stand on the eggs whenever you can. However, on high enrage, like 200-300%, to 300%, sometimes you take less damage by just ignoring the eggs and killing the minions because the darkness does so much at higher enrage. But for low enrage, it's definitely worth it to just stand on the eggs and kill them. Finally, after a bit of time passes, a Raxor will do a charge attack. The camera angle will change and it'll go into sort of like a little cutscene thing. So the player must then press an arrow key corresponding to how a Raxor attacks you to dodge it and break down the wall in front of you. So when a Raxor swipes right, you'll want to press the right key. When a Raxor swipes from the left, you'll want to press the left key. When a Raxor's front legs are lower to the floor and spread out, you'll want to press the up key. When a Raxor's legs are pointed down but close to each other, you'll press the down key. I'll also leave a link in the description to more tips on this part, but it's pretty easy to get down once you get used to it and pressing the right key. So if you dodge correctly, the wall will be destroyed and you will head into phase 3. But if you miss, however, or are a little too slow, you will get dealt either 2500 or 5000 damage depending on if you are slow or if you just did nothing. You will then need to dodge again to break down the wall. Now we're going to talk about the other paths that you can take for phase 2, and the first is the acid path or the middle path. So when you go into this path, you will be in an area with a big green acid pool, and you'll also have a Raxor in there. Now keep in mind during this phase, a Raxor can use these special attacks, Egg Bomb, Cleave, Cocoon, and Web Shield, and also a new special attack, the Acidic Spider. Now the Acidic Spider is a new and very dangerous special attack, and basically it's a spider that will one one hit kill you if it touches you. To know if a Raxor summons a spider, he will shoot a projectile out of his mouth and it will land on the ground and cause a spot on the ground to glow with green acid. After a few seconds, an acidic spider will spawn. The spider will come after you and the spider has a timer above its head before it disappears. The spider will move towards you and always kill you in one hit if it touches you. If you see the spider come out, you should move away from the greenest patch on the ground and wait for the spider to die. Now if you aren't able to move out of the way right away, using barricade can block the damage, although moving or surging away is much, much easier. Sometimes the acidic spiders are slow and sometimes they're as fast as you. It's random when it spawns. So just make sure to always pay attention and when you see the acid spot on the ground get shot out, make sure to get away from it as soon as possible. So for this phase, you must get our Raxor to low health like before and have him break down a barrier. So what you want to do for this path is you want to lure a Raxor onto the pool of acid in the middle of the arena. You can do this easily by standing where I do on this ramp. Now you want to keep attacking and damaging a Raxor during the phase while he absorbs the acid. There will be a bar above a Raxor showing how much acid he has absorbed. Now once you get a Raxor to around 60% acid absorbed, you want to surge up the ramp and stand at the top of it. Now you must damage a Raxor and wait for him to corrode the ramp so you can move on to phase 3. During this section, it's a bit tricky to avoid special attacks. For the cleave attack, you can surge through a Raxor or try to to run back and to the side. For the acidic spider, it's best to not mess around, and if it spawn close to you, just take a Raxor back down the ramp and wait till it's gone, absorb a little more acid if needed, and then take a Raxor back up the ramp. So once a ramp is fully corroded with acid, it will break and a Raxor will jump down and you can click on the ramp to enter phase 3. Alright, so the final path is the minion path, otherwise known as top path. This path you go into and you'll have to deal with minions and basically you go through where the web is burnt and a Raxor will regain all his HP. So to do this path, you will deal with all of the same special attacks as before. The egg bomb, the cocoon, the web shield, and the cleave. And and now a new special attack which is spider minions. 
So now we'll talk a bit in depth about the spider minion attack. Basically, a Raxor will spawn four waves of spiders. A Raxor will summon five spiders per wave for a total of 20 spiders. Now the first three waves he summons will be four normal spiders and then a special spider. You'll know a Raxor is summoning minions when you see spiders crawling on the screen when he does his spec. There are five types of spiders. Three are just regular spiders that attack with different and combat styles and are very easy to kill but you will get a special spider for the first three waves in different parts of the wave. This could either be a pulsing spider or a mirror back spider. First we'll talk about the mirror back spider which is particularly dangerous. This spider reflects all damage back to the aggressor. This is super deadly and a few hits could easily kill you. So the best course of action when a mirror back spider is spawned is to step back from a Raxor when he's summoning minions. Then you'll want to find the mirror back spider and kill it before getting back onto a Raxor. Another spider that is special is the pulsing spider which will heal a Raxor for 5k every 5 seconds. This spider isn't super dangerous, it just heals a Raxor, so just kill it when you see it pop up. It will just heal a Raxor for a little bit. Now here's a breakdown of when each special spider is spawned. As you can see, you can see wave 1, 2, and 3 have a special spider, and wave 4 has no special spider. So on the final wave of minions, you will not have to worry about any special spiders. So basically, in summary, for a minion path, you'll want to enter the path and start damaging a Raxor. You'll want to wait for the minions to spawn and then kill them. So there's two ways you can go about this. You can either enter phase 3 when a Raxor is under 5k health by going all the way through the big bridge area, or you can wait until all minions are dead even if a Raxor is low health because you will still have to deal with all four waves of minions even if you enter phase 3. So entering phase 3 is not going to bypass any of the waves of minions. I would recommend for beginners to take your time by just killing the minions by focusing on the mirror backs and then using AoE abilities and once you're more experienced then you can take some of the minion waves with you into phase 3. Now for the minion phase you do get damage a bit from all the minions but it's actually quite simple to do once you get the hang so moving on to phase three this phase is actually pretty simple and the mechanics basically depend on what paths are open so for this path you'll enter the big last area and you'll need to get a Raxor to zero health to enter the fourth and final phase. You'll have to deal with the same core mechanics you did the whole fight, the web shield, the cocoon, cleave, and the egg bomb, but the other mechanics are based on what paths are currently open. For instance, if minion path and darkness path are open, a Raxor will be able to spawn minions unless you already dealt with all four of the waves on phase two, which is what I recommended for beginners, and a Raxor will be able to put down the darkness spotlights that you need to stand in like you did on the darkness path. So if acid path is open, a Raxor will spawn acidic spiders with the leftover acid from the pool. These can still one hit kill you, so it's basically the same thing that you have to watch out for on the acid path. And if this path is open, a Raxor will also summon highly acidic spiders, which is the only new mechanic, and they're harmless, but they can be lured into a Raxor. It is best to ignore these on low enrage, they really don't help you at all. But if you're high in rage, you can basically lure these spiders into a Raxor, and then he will do less damage to you on phase four. So in recap on phase three, you will attack a Raxor, getting him to zero health while dealing with these mechanics. You'll deal with Web Shield, Cocoon, Cleave, and Egg Bomb. If Path 1 and 2 is open, you'll deal with Minion Spawning and Acidic Spiders. If Path 1 and 3 is open, you'll deal with Minion Spawning and the Darkness Spotlights. If Path 2 and 3 is open, you'll deal with Spotlights and Acidic Spiders. This phase is really self-explanatory, and the most dangerous part is if Acid Path is open and there are Acidic Spiders potentially spawning. Just use Death Swiftness, DPS, and get a Raxor to zero health, and you'll be entering phase four the final phase all right so now we are on to phase four the final phase for this phase you'll enter an arena as a raxor goes over to the final platform and out comes a raxi make sure you stall adrenaline after the cutscene so a raxor will start at 100k health and be able to use the web shield the cleave and the cocoon mechanics 
Abraxor will also be able to summon minions if you still have any left over, and also use the Darkness Spotlight if that path is active. Araxor will use magic and ranged auto attacks on this phase. Basically like the attacks I showed before, the mage is the green acid looking thing and the ranged is the darker missile looking thing. Basically you'll need to switch prayers this entire phase and also be using anticipate and freedom to avoid any special attacks. Think of it almost like you're doing phase 3 but prayer switching the whole time. It helps to stand 4 or 5 squares away from a Raxi. So this way you have time to switch your prayers correctly so the attacks don't get stacked on top of each other and kill you. For this method you'll basically want to use death swiftness or your ultimate ability at the start. Make sure you focus on getting Araxor to 50k health as soon as possible. You'll want to use an adrenaline potion and use your thresholds while prayer switching and watching out for special attacks. If you're meleeing make sure you stand out of total melee distance so Araxor doesn't hit you with melee making things much worse. After Araxor gets to 50k health, she cannot use any more special attacks and she'll become enraged. At this point, you only need to focus on prayer switching and you don't need to worry about any other specials. Now, once you get to 25k health, Araxi will send out a black acid wave. This is a black wave that comes out of Araxi and it will bounce around you at least five times before landing on you. When the wave hits you, it will continuously deal typeless damage which increases every hit, so you must move away. It will also drain your adrenaline by 50% when it's shot out of Araxi. This is an important note. So basically right when Araxi gets below 25k health, your adrenaline will be drained and this acid wave will be shot out. This is a mechanic that kills most people and the easiest way to deal with it is to run away and run around Araxi while prayer switching and dealing damage. However, now I'm going to go over a few tips and methods to do phase 4. The first method will be a basic method if you do not have Onslaught unlocked. So for this basic method, you'll basically want to use your ultimate when the phase starts. Make sure to focus on getting Araxor to 50k health as soon soon as possible. Adrenaline potions and thresholds while prayer switching and watching out for special attacks. The priority is getting to 50k health, so then you can take a breather and not have to deal with specials and only have to pray flick. Debilitate can help a lot if you're getting overwhelmed or missing prayer flicks. Once you're at 50k health, you then want to build up your adrenaline while damaging Araxor. Once Araxor is close to 25k health, I would recommend using the Devotion ability, then continue prayer flicking and switching and then right before a Raxor gets below 25k health you'll want to use something like rapid fire assault or asphyxiate because after a Raxor gets below 25k health your adrenaline will, will be drained so you want to make sure that you use this high damaging threshold right before a Raxor sends out the core after this, Araxor should be pretty low health and you should be able to use a few basics and finish Araxi off while running around to avoid the core. Now if you have a Saren God Bow or something like that, you can use it at 25k health and you'll basically end up killing Araxor before the Black Wave even touches you. Now the next method is very useful for beginners at Araxor and it requires you to have the Onslaught ability. Basically, you'll do the same thing as we did before to get Araxi to 50k health. After this, you'll want to build your adrenaline to 100%. Once you're there, you want to use the Devotion ability. After this, you want to Adrenaline Potion back up to 100% and then use Onslaught when Araxor is near like 30k health. Now just focus on switching your prayers, and your Onslaught should kill Araxi before the Putrid Wave can even touch you. But it may be close, and if Araxor isn't dead, make sure to move out of the way of the core, and then just finish Araxi off. This is the way that I personally learned how to kill Araxor when I first started out, and it really is a great method for beginners, because you can use Devotion, Onslaught, and then just strictly sit there and focus on prayer switching while your onslaught is doing the damage. But make sure you cancel your onslaught though because you don't want to accidentally kill yourself and make sure you move out of the way when the core comes of course. And that is it. Phase 4 is by far the hardest phase of the fight to learn and a lot of people have trouble with it, but with practice, with prayer flicking, you should be able to get your first Araxi kill in no time. 
Quickly now, I'm going to go through a few advanced tips and tricks to end the guide. So the main tip I want to talk about is using Snipe or Quake on the web shield. Basically, when Araxor does the web shield attack and heals and reflects damage to you, you can Snipe or Quake Araxor and then quickly switch to your shield and resonance. This will cause the reflected damage to heal you and it helps a bit with maintaining food. Another advanced tip is if you have a Saren Godbow. So basically on phase 4 you can get a Raxor to 50k and once you're there you can build up your adrenaline and wait until Raxor is like 30k health. So once a Raxor is low health you want to SGB spec and as soon as it goes off you want to snapshot. This should instantly kill a Raxor from 30k health and you shouldn't really have to do anything else. This is basically how I now have a super easy phase 4 now that I have the Saren Godbow. And that is it. I hope this guide helped you all out. I spent a ton of hours scripting, testing, and making this guide for it to be the best possible. So if it helped you, please consider subscribing for more guides and RuneScape 3 videos and leaving a like as well. If you guys want to see more boss guides, let me know below and thank you so much for watching and for all the support. I really hope this guide helps you and of course if you have any questions, feel free to leave them below and I'll try to answer them as soon as possible.